Now let's say if we have a container with water. And what's going to happen if we put an ice cube in this container? If we put an ice cube, we know that the ice cube will float. However, if we put, let's say, a chunk of aluminum in this uh, container, the chunk of aluminum will fall to the bottom. It's going to sink. Whereas ice will float. Why is that? Why is it that some materials, when placed in water, will float and others will sink? The answer has to do with density. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. In chemistry, this value is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. On the other hand, the density of ice is less than that of water. It's a 917. Now, because the density of ice is less than water, that's why ice doesn't sink. Instead, it floats on top of water. Now, the density of aluminum is greater than that of water. It's 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. And that's why aluminum sinks to the bottom. It's heavier than water. So objects with a low density, like wood or ice, tend to float on water. Objects with a very high density, or higher than that of water, are the ones that sink. So that's how you can tell if an object will sink or float. It's based on density. Now let's say if you fill a balloon with helium gas. Will this balloon rise to the top or will it sink? Now what about if you fill a balloon with air? Will it rise or will it sink? And what about if you fill a balloon with carbon dioxide? So what's going to happen to these three balloons? Well, you need to know the weight of air. Air is mostly nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now, if you look at the periodic table, nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14. So if you multiply it by 2, the molecular mass of N2 is about 28 grams per mole. And the molar mass of O2 is about 32 grams per mole. Now, the atmosphere is mostly 79% of nitrogen and approximately 20-21% of oxygen. So if you take a weighted average of these values, it's about 1% argon, by the way, which has a molar mass of 40 grams per mole. So if you take a weighted average of these numbers, you can get the average molar mass or average weight of air. So it's 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and almost 1% argon. There's some other gases too, but this will give us a rough estimate. So the average molar mass of air is somewhere between 28 and 32. It's about 28.9 grams per mole, very close to the weight of nitrogen. Now, helium is a very light gas. The atomic mass of helium is 4 grams per mole. Carbon dioxide is a heavy gas. The atomic mass of carbon is 12, based on the periodic table, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16, multiplied by 2. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. So as you can see, carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So if you fill a balloon with carbon dioxide, it's going to sink. But if you fill up a balloon with helium, it's going to rise, because helium is lighter than air. And just as we place ice in water, the ice float. If you put ice at the bottom of a container with water, it's going to rise to the top. Now, water is a fluid, and air is also a fluid. Both of these materials, or states of matter, has the ability to flow. And so gases and liquids are fluids.
So just like if you put an ice cube at the bottom of water, it's going to float to the top because ice is less dense than water. The same is true of helium. Helium is less dense than air. So helium will rise to the top. Now we saw that the aluminum metal will sink to the bottom of the container filled with water because aluminum is heavier than water. Likewise, carbon dioxide is heavier than air and that's why it sinks. Now what about a balloon filled with air? Will it rise, will it sink, or will it remain the same? Now because it's made up of air, it has the same average molar mass. However, this balloon will slowly sink. And the reason for that is it's still heavier than air because you also have the mass of the skin of the balloon. So not only are you dealing with the mass of air, but also the mass of the balloon itself. And so that makes it slightly more heavier than air. And so that's why if you put a balloon, it doesn't just fall down instantly. It slowly uh, falls down. Now let's talk about hot air and cold air. Which one will sink and which one will rise? What would you say? Now perhaps from experience you know that hot air rises and cold air sinks. If you've ever been to a three-story house, if you go up in the attic, you'll find that the attic is usually a lot hotter than the average temperature of the house. And if you go to the basement, it's cooler than the average temperature of the house. That's because hot air tends to rise, cold air tends to sink. Another example is, let's say if you have boiling water in a pot. So if you add some heat to it, the water vapor will rise. It will not fall down, it will go up. The reason why it goes up is because it's hotter than the surrounding air. Now, on the other example, let's say if you place dry ice on a table. Dry ice is very cold, and you'll see water condensing around the dry ice. Carbon dioxide, which is basically dry ice, the solid form of dry ice, is invisible in a gaseous state. So what you're really seeing is the condensed water vapor. And carbon dioxide in its dry ice form is very cold, so it cools the surrounding air around it. And so, as a result, whenever you have cold air, it sinks. Plus, carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so that also causes carbon dioxide to sink. But it cools the surrounding air, which causes the surrounding air and the condensed water vapor to sink. So if you ever look at dry ice, you'll see the mist slowly descend. So what you want to take from this is that hot air rises, cold air sinks. And the reason why hot air rises is because it's lighter than cold air. Cold air is heavy, hot air is light. Whenever you add heat to surrounding air molecules, the air molecules move apart. Whenever you add heat to a material, the molecules expand. When you cool it down, they condense and they get closer to each other. So for a given volume, there's less mass in a certain space when dealing with hot air. But when dealing with cold air, for a given volume, there's more gas particles. So there's more mass per volume. So cold air has a higher density than hot air. As you can see, there's more mass per unit volume. Here, there's less mass per unit volume. And so that's why cold air sinks and hot air rises. Cold air has a higher density than hot air. And this is because the atoms are closer together in cold air as opposed to hot air. In hot air, they're further apart. So because they're closer together, there's more mass per unit volume in cold air. So the real driving force in terms of whether something rises or sinks is density. In hot air, the density is lower. In cold air, the density is higher. And it comes down to that. And this is the basis for a hot air balloon.
So anytime you heat up the air inside the hot air balloon, when it gets hot, the air inside the balloon is lighter than the surrounding air. The surrounding air is relatively cold. And so that causes the hot air balloon to rise. Now, eventually, let's say if you turn off the fire, heat will flow from the hot air balloon to the cold environment. So this will cool down. And so the weight of the balloon and the weight of the passengers will eventually cause the balloon to descend. So by allowing the hot air to cool down, the balloon will slowly descend. But if you want the balloon to rise, then you just got to turn on the fire again, heat up the inside air, and then the hot air will create a lift force that will lift up the hot air balloon. So that's how hot air balloons work. When you raise the temperature of the air inside, it lifts up the balloon. When you allow it to cool naturally, then the weight of the balloon will cause it to sink. Now, I do want to mention one small detail, and that is that the hot air itself doesn't create the lift force. The lift force technically is created from the displaced cold air molecules. Now, for instance, let's say if we have a container of water, and if we place the ice cube at the bottom of the container, we know the ice cube will rise. It doesn't rise on its own. The ice cube takes up space, and basically, that space previously was occupied by water molecules. So those water molecules are displaced. Now those displaced water molecules, they exert a force on the ice cube, and the ice cube exerts a force on them. However, water is heavier than ice, so water is going to apply more force than ice will exert on water. And so there's going to be a net upward force that pushes the ice to the top. So it's the displaced water molecules that causes the ice cube to rise. Now, air is a fluid just like water. So in this case, the displaced cold air molecules pushes up on the hot air molecules. And that's why hot air rises and cold air sinks. For one, hot air is less dense than uh, cold air. So density is a factor. But the way it works is that cold air pushes up on the hot air. So the hot air doesn't rise on its own. It's being pushed up by the surrounding cold air molecules, the displaced cold air molecules.